How you doing? What, what, what show are we on? Truth is viral. The truth is viral, people. So uh, take two penicillins and call me in the morning. You're watching The Truth is Viral, the only news program on the internet trusted to deliver the truth since 2008. And now, here's your host, Mr. Bobby Powell. Hey, welcome back to The Truth is Viral. My name is Bob Powell, and no, I'm not in Florida. I've torn down my studio and have moved it. I haven't got it set back up yet. But we've got some important things that we need to talk about, uh, especially concerning what's coming up for the 4th of July in here, here in Alpena, Michigan. Now, I've been receiving conflicting information people, from people that should know whether there's going to be a 4th of July parade and fireworks at all. So I thought that I would clear up all of this uh, speculation and go right to the source of the matter. And the man who really will know is my <laughs> guest tonight. His name is <laughs> Matt Walaguri. He's the mayor of Alpena. How are you today, Matt? Very good. Very good, Bobby. You'd be surprised what I do and don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, so I've heard from people inside city uh, government and county government as well that uh, there might not be a Fourth of July or a, or a parade, which you know just tears my heart out because ever since I've moved back to Alpena in 2011, when just right before you became mayor. This is where my whole family gathers. We get, go to the same place, same beach to watch the fireworks. We go to the same place to watch a parade each and every year. It's the only time of the year except maybe Christmas when the entire family gets together and goes out and has some fun. And that just ripped my heart out to think that we weren't going to have a celebration of our founding, that a, the Revolutionary War was fought during a smallpox epidemic. And now we're facing a, a virus with a Fatality rate, mortality rate of just over 2%, and everybody's losing their freaking minds. So uh, let's clear this up. Now, is there going to be a uh, parade in Alpena? Are there going to be fireworks? Well, I wish I could say, yes, absolutely, there will be. Um, but but if, as you know, there are different, uh, there, there, there's different levels um, above me. So, so I will tell you where they're at from my perspective. Um, so let's start with the fireworks. So the, the fireworks are, are 100% um, funded by the community. Uh, donations from businesses and people and they, uh, the ambassadors for the chamber do fundraisers. Um, they sell the bracelets. Everybody's probably seen them uh, at this point, uh, either out on the street in a, uh, you know, at a stoplight or, or at the radio station, Walmart, they're all over the place. Uh, unfortunately, they haven't been able to get out. Uh, they usually start uh, in early March, I think. So they haven't been able to get out and do that. Um, a lot of fundraising, obviously, has changed the way we do things. And so um, prior to our last city council meeting, we got a, um, we received an email from the, from the chamber basically saying, you know, we haven't been able to do any fundraising. Um, so we would support uh, canceling the fireworks this year. Um, and, uh, and so what, what we did was, uh, um, our staff, our, 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 I believe it was our fire chief got a hold of the company that, uh, that does our fireworks and, and, uh, they talked out when would they have to know when would be a deadline? Because what we wanted to do as council city council was instead of saying, you know, coming out on that Monday, which I think was last Monday, instead of coming out on that Monday and saying, hey, we're going to cancel the fireworks because, because we, no one was able to do any fundraising, so therefore we don't have any funds for it. Um, what we preferred to do was, hey, let's let everybody know that at this point right here today, there are no funds for the fireworks. And if people are inclined to donate to the fireworks and, and they can do so before the deadline, which um, now is, um, is basically June 1st, but we've set it at, at, at May 28th, just so we'd have a couple days buffer there. So we have until um, the 28th to raise um, uh, just over $20,000, which is normally what we, spend on the fireworks. I, I believe the number is maybe $23,000, $23, between twenty and twenty-five, anyhow. Um, so we've put that out there and the chamber is supportive of that. So the chamber has a GoFundMe uh, page um, that was released to the media, uh, I think uh, 
today or yesterday. And then, um, and then donations can also be sent directly to the chamber. And of course, I don't have their address with me right now, but okay. Well, I'll make sure to get all that and put it in the video description below. So, yeah, uh, so let's say so that let's this. Say Let's say oh, I'm this, sorry. I'm, that's okay. No problem. Let's say that this company that, that normally does your fireworks, uh, it, we can't raise enough money. Say we raise fifteen thousand dollars. Okay, so you don't have the company to, to do that. Well, Marine Corps spent millions of dollars training me how to blow stuff up. I'll, <laughs> I'll do it for you. Uh, well, we can't um, obviously just hire anybody, and not that you're just anybody, <laughs> Bobby. You're you're Bobby Powell. Um, but we I, have uh, we have a longstanding um, relationship with the company. So let me. So here's the thing. So so we have a. So we currently have a three year uh, contract with this same. Uh, company. Um, and so this year was to be our third year. And then we would, you know, decide whether we were going to uh, re-up or not. But so what they, what they've basically said is that if we can't raise enough money or for any other reason, we don't, we, we can't hold the fireworks, they will extend um, our contract with them for another year. That would be the agreement. So, so we're all in agreement with that. So, so here's the two things that will that will allow us to do um, to do a good fireworks show this year. And so, a I, as I've explained, um, raising enough money um, to have the fireworks, and b will be whether whether the city is uh, and I'm going to say allowed, um, or if uh, or by the state level government, or if um, if there's a ban on on specifically on launching, you know, on having fireworks show or having a you know, it can be worded just however you want. And I don't want to give her any ideas, to be honest with you. But if but if a, but if an order came out that said that that municipalities are not allowed to to host events that that um, people may gather to or something like that, then that's going to put a that's going to put a real issue or a, a real problem on 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 things that that we think that we might be, you know, be able to do um and what we're what we're allowed to do and what we're not allowed to do and and really quite frankly at that point let's just say that that happens for instance if that happens in late june um uh, if the government feels that you know a lot of communities are planning to do events for the fourth of july and they don't want them to because people might gather um uh if something like that happens then then basically communities will have to start to decide whether they're going to, you know, whether we might challenge something like that or not. Um, what do you think the chances of something like that happening in Alpena would be? Do you think that Alpena would challenge an order like that? It's very difficult. Um, it, it's difficult. Um, and, and and as it was explained to our law for uh, by our law enforcement, it, it's the issue is with our law enforcement. Okay. And, and I understand that there's sheriffs all over the state that are, that are saying that they're not going to, um, they're not going to uh, enforce some of the laws or, or rules or executive orders or whatever you want to call them uh, that the governor's putting out. Um, that's difficult. Um, it's an election year. Maybe, maybe that's got a lot to do with it. Uh, I, I don't want to speak for them. Um, but that, but it's a pretty big challenge. Um, it's been done before with other laws um, over the years. This isn't the first time that a law enforcement agency has basically said that they're not going to enforce a law that the state that the state puts out. But um, so we'll just kind of have to see. Uh, we'll just kind of have to play it by ear. It, it really de it really depends. Uh, um, again, I don't I really don't like to put our our local city police department in a in a um, you know, in a tug of war or, or a bad situation between what, what the city government is telling them we want them to do and what the state government is telling them that they have to do. Um, we've talked about a little bit about the constitutionality of what the governor is doing. And until we can all have our opinions, but until um, someone of authority tells us that that yes, in fact, um, she's violating, you know, someone's constitutional rights or, or civil rights or whatever, then, um, then we're a police department is really kind of responsible for upholding that. And so, okay, well, kinda, for, forgive me if I'm getting the chain of command wrong, but wouldn't you be the executive officer in charge of Alpena and in charge of the police department? Um, yes and no, um, Bobby, because the, because the, 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 
the police department and the police, the, the chief and the whole department, they obviously have an oath for their office, as, as most of us do. Um, but part of their oath is to is to uphold the laws of the state of Michigan. Um, and when the when this executive order came out and and those became uh, what we'll call laws or executive orders, they 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 fall under the state of Michigan and and the city of Alpena. So, for instance, I'll just give you an example. Um, uh, I'll try to think of one. Um, let's say, uh, well, let's use the helmet law, for instance. Um, that was challenged years ago before before the state of Michigan relaxed the helmet law. It was it was basically not enforced in the city of Coldwater. So, so, um, but but n under normal circumstances, I wouldn't. The city council and myself wouldn't be able to say, "Hey, we're going to." We're going to um, let's say we're going to make everybody wear helmets, motorcycle helmets in the city of Alpena. So it's just a for instance. I don't know. I'm just kind of pulling it out of my pulling it out of the air right now. But but let's just say we're going to pass an ordinance that says that if you're riding a motorcycle in the city of Alpena, you have to wear a helmet. Okay, but the state of the state of Michigan says that you don't. Um, normally, we can't do something like that. We can't. We can't write a, 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 an ordinance or a law that goes against or is different significantly from one that's already established by the state. And so that makes it kind of difficult for us um, to turn around. And well, we were a couple of weeks ago, we tried it with the lawn care service. So so all five of us that sit on city council, you know, I, I wrote up this I wrote up this supportive um, document basically saying that we would like to we would like to not enforce that part of the executive order and allow lawn care services to operate in the city of Alpena. Um, we all agreed with it. I was, I was really, it was really quite nice. It's not, it doesn't happen every day where all five of us agree with something that I said. Um, and so, so, so we all supported it. And then, and then of course, you know, then, then our police chief explained to us the difficult that he, difficulty he would have with that because of the fact that it was specifically stated by the governor an executive order that you know that she couldn't that 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 she wasn't allowing lawn care services and so it put him in a in an in a in a situation and our attorney kind of gave us the same the same example or that he felt the same that it would just be um and, and i know a lot of cities did it and i, I don't know you know yeah well I guess, Perhaps they should refer to uh, Attorney General Bill Barr's uh, recent submission to uh, the Western District of Michigan federal prosecutors there to be on the lookout for Gretchen Whitmer's overuse of her tyrannical powers, basically. Because the First Amendment cannot be abrogated by an executive order. She can't just say, well, you're not allowed to go here, here, and here, because the First Amendment guarantees us the right freedom to the freedom of assembly and so you know that this is why the sheriffs around the, around the state are saying no we're not going to follow these tyrannical edicts so yeah. uh you know chief jet needs to uh uh read up on that do a little bit of well research. and i and i understand i really i, I really do i i get it um i i've read up almost everything that I can stand to read. Um, some of it I, I really haven't gotten to yet. And, and it's just, it's really quite disturbing um, to a lot of us, you know, and I, I, I understood what we were doing right out of the gate. And I thought, you know what, we're doing the right thing. State of Michigan is doing the right thing. And I think a lot of people probably did. And then when it becomes partisan and it becomes political and it becomes more of a, more of an argument um, between the parties, um, and, and uh, you know, whether it's a grab for power or a grab for popularity or, or just to get on the national scale, I, I don't know. I can't answer for that. But, um, but a lot of it now, a lot of it now just seems like it, it's, um, it's really not helping our smaller businesses. So, so basically, you know, we all know, I mean, you're with me every day. We, we, you can see that people are going to the big box stores because big box stores are open and um, they're buying a lot of stuff that that the same the same things that are in our smaller stores. And, and I know that they're not essential, but they just happen to be on the shelves while they're in there. And it's just kind of disheartening that um, that now we've 
we've gotten this far and we can't find a way to to allow people to um, be more um, be a little bit more um, uh, responsible for themselves yep. and the people around them. Yep. Uh, I, I, I feel you because I can't go to uh, Walmart and buy seeds from my garden, but I can go to a certain store in town and buy sex toys. Yeah, that that yeah. is apparently an essential item to have during this pandemic. Apparently, yeah. Um, you know, the decisions for, for what's essential and what's not, I, I really haven't had the same opinion uh, as the state um, pretty much from the get-go. But uh, but like I said, it, it's I'm kind of, I'm hoping that, that things will start to open up and we can start being a little bit more responsible for ourselves. And, and um, you know, and, and there's still the... The issue with people, you know, being six foot apart and wearing masks and things of that nature, but um, but at some point we're going to have to uh, start getting the economy back going. I and I and I think it's I think it's uh, sooner than later. Um, would like to run down to Owasso and get my hair cut. Um, you want to go I, with me uh, tomorrow? That's exactly where I'm going to be. I'm going to be down at Owasso. Doesn't look like you need a haircut. <laughs> What are you gonna have them do? <laughs> well, I got these ear hairs that keep oh, bothering okay. me. All right, I'm uh, sure he can. In his uh, 30 years of experience, he could probably hook you right yeah, up. But, yeah, I'm sure we could find some. Okay, so here we are. We've got. Oh, two I didn't things. want to get off track. No, that's I, I didn't okay. Mean to get off track. No, you're fine. You're fine. This is a great conversation. Uh, okay, here we are. Uh, Fourth of July fireworks. Okay. Depending on uh, the government's executive orders, if uh, Governor Wichmer, Wich, <laughs> Wichmer decides to uh, shut everything down. Okay, that's one thing it depends on. Second thing it depends on is funding. And again, right. I'm going to put the, the link to the GoFundMe for the fireworks fund in the description below this video. So if you want to uh, donate to this very worthy cause, because Alpina has the most outstanding fireworks every year. Now, let's talk about the parade because that's a different okay. animal. Uh, so the parade. Who runs um, the parade? So the parade and the last uh, the last several years has been run by um, by the performance locker, Casey Stutzman, out of the performance locker. He is the he's the organizer, the host. Um, he does pretty much uh, everything. Uh, used to be a chamber of commerce thing, but uh, they got out of that business of of organizing the parade. And so um so uh, Casey took it over. Uh, I have not spoken with him um, about it yet this season. I, I, I really don't know where he's at with it. Uh, what they do is at the beginning of the year, it's my understanding that the permits are pulled for, for every parade that's, that's, that's ordinary uh, throughout the year. So you got your uh, 4th of July Memorial Day, Veterans Day. Um, I think there's four. Uh, probably, I'm forgetting. Well, oh, Christmas um uh christmas parade there at thanksgiving and so you've got your four major parades um they go on a they go on the agenda we approve those uh, a consent agenda uh in january and so so the approval part of the parade for the parade is all is already out there um now there again um you know it, it's basically it, it i don't want to put i don't want to throw casey under the bus but as the organizer for the for the event, he that is that's his or that's his event. Um, you know, if if let's just say, and and there's a couple of scenarios for that too. And unfortunately, they they um, one doesn't suck and the other one does. Um, the other, you know, one is that Casey decides he's going to do it, and um, and and he's you know, and, and he gets it together, and the and they have a parade, and everything is generally normal, you know, so to speak, um, you know, maybe people are maybe at that point in early July, people are asked to stay a distance from strangers and things of that nature. Who knows where we're going to be at, at that point. Um, so he gets it together and, and, 
and the state allows it, then he's good to go. Now, if he gets it together and then come end of June, the state comes out and under, and says, you know, hey, uh, no parades. So no, no, nothing like that, that, you know, that, that um, entices people to gather. And so then, then we're going to have the same issue that we might have with the fireworks. Um, and there's really just no telling what, what she might, what she might say at that point, you know, and it may not, you know, maybe the governor might be, maybe she'll get on board with the legislature by then. I, I don't know. So I'm just going to say the state. Um, and if that happens, we'll be in the same situation. And, and quite frankly, I don't know if Casey's already decided that, that he's either going to have it or cancel it. I'm not sure. Um, well, I'll have to get a hold of him and ask him. When you but, look uh, out, you know, you look out. Um, I just, I really, to be honest with you, um, I try to keep up with the news, but sometimes it slips by me. Um, and I, I like two minutes before I took this call from you, I, I was forwarded a, a link from, um, from WBKB and basically saying that the Memorial Day events have been canceled. Um, I was really surprised about that. I, I wasn't aware of that. Uh, now I am. Um, and so what happens there is like you were mentioning with the 4th of July, and I don't want to get too long winded, but you got Memorial Day. That's, that's a, that's a specific organization puts more, puts together the events for Memorial Day every year. Um, same with, um, you know, same with Veterans Day, same with uh, Christmas same parade, same with the 4th of July. Um, when these, when the organization comes out and says that they want to cancel it, see, that's never happened to us before. And so, so you might have somebody else that comes out and let's say 4th of July, uh, let's say you call mm -hmm. Casey and he says that, no, he's going to cancel it because it just that seems like the right thing to do. And then you turn around and you say, you know what? I don't want it canceled. So I know, see, yeah. I know. I'll I see my own parade. Already. So uh, same thing with Memorial Day. You know, it's apparently it's been canceled and I've had a couple of people reach out to me that they would like to do, that they would like to do the event. Yep. They've reached um, out to me as well and I'll be publicizing that event. And so the, uh, here, here's time. the, here's the issue um, that I have to, I have to look into because this is kind of new to me. So I have to look into the, you know, the, if a permit is, if, if a permit is put out for for someone to hold a parade and it's under someone's specific name or someone's organization, how does that, does that permit transfer to somebody else that might want to do it? Or does it have to start over at square one and come to council and be reapproved? Um, I, I don't, I don't really know. I wish I had that answer, but, um, but it kind of jumped at me like two minutes before I took your call. So yeah. I'm not really sure. Okay, well, between you and me and uh, the organizers of these events, I'm sure we can find out some way to get around uh, the Wicked Witch of the South down below. <laughs> yeah, does. you know, I, I would, I'd like to. You know, you've got, you've got our seniors uh, graduating coming up, and there's been some different events um, thrown out for that that people um, are looking to want to do. You know, to 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 give our our seniors a big send off. Um, some of this stuff, quite frankly, just kind of amazes me. Um, like we talked earlier about the Post and Potato Festival. So I, I, it just kind of blows my mind that something as far off as September um, is being canceled already. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just kind of some of this kind of surprises me a little bit here. I, yeah. I want to go out and I want to I want to eat dinner somewhere. I want to, you know, start to uh, have some resemblance of uh, of of a social life. Um, and to find out that something, you know, as far off as September is being canceled, it just kind of, um, kind of shakes me a little bit. Yeah. I think this whole thing is shaking a lot of people and, uh, there's a lot of rumors going around and I'm glad that we could clear this one up. So the only thing that's going to stop the 4th of July fireworks and the parade is governor Whitmer and a lack of money. So, um, uh, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I can speak for the fourth. I can speak for the fireworks for sure, because that's pretty much what we, what we do. We, the city okay. of Alpena signs the contract for that and we provide the land. And, um, I really haven't been told by anybody, uh, internally or externally that we're not going to be allowed to do it. Uh, All right. and, Excellent. and I think, I, I guess I, I would assume that if, that if, um, if there was, somebody that you know somebody internally like staff or something that really had apprehensions about it they probably would have said something but uh, okay. by now all right um so we're going to proceed with that uh, and, and and we'll just kind of 
we'll just kind of play it by ear and see what else happens. Um, I see a lot more barbershop people like, I, I forget his name now. I watched his interview today. His name's uh, Mankey. Mankey, yeah. Carl um, Mankey. Carl, yeah. I see a lot of people doing, um, doing what Carl's doing. And yeah. hopefully that starts to make a little bit of a difference. You, you almost, you know, you and me, you, you wish that that government would do what what the majority of people think is the right thing before you get civil unrest because now we're going to yeah. get civil unrest yeah. um, and you get, then you get protests and you get, you know, um, things you really don't want to see, but you know, uh, bless his heart. I, I hope that guy, I hope he does well. I hope he's, you know, his attorney um, can help walk him through this and he might be, he might be, a very pivotal point in this whole issue. Matt Royal Agoria, the uh, mayor of Alpena, thank you so much for being on The Truth Is Viral and helping me clear this stuff up. And uh, do remember to keep me in your in your thoughts so that whenever you find out something new, then we can uh, get that information out and everybody will be uh, up to date on the real scoop. All right. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. You too. Thanks, buddy. Bye. Now, since 1997... 264 separate complaints of sexual misconduct or discrimination have been made against senators and members of the staff. Last year alone, the U.S. president paid nearly $1 million to victims. The total amount paid to these victims under the Congressional Accountability Act is almost $17 million. But the names of these offenders have been kept secret through the use of non-disclosure agreements. So, the offenders in, in uh, Congress in the Senate have not actually been held accountable. So would you uh, sponsor or uh, sign legislation that would uh, name these? The short members? answer is there should be total transparency in any of these. Names are named, and there should be not one federal dollar spent on any claim settlement. That is our experience. So, yes, names should be named and no federal money spent. Since 1998, 264 members of Congress have settled accusations of sexual discrimination, sexual abuse, and even rape. The victims were paid off from a slush fund created by the Congressional Accountability Act in exchange for non-disclosure agreements that kept the identities of those sexual predators hidden from the public. Join General Bergman and I in a campaign called We Want Names. General Bergman wants the identities of these perverts revealed and for the money paid to the victims to be pulled from the pockets of the perpetrators and returned to the United States Treasury. It makes no difference if you're a Republican or a Democrat. You deserve to have honorable men and women representing you in Congress. And with your help, I intend to root out all those who do not pack the gear to serve in those hallowed halls. So please go to bobpowell.blogspot.com and donate whatever won't put you out towards this noble cause. Thank you for watching The Truth is Viral. My name is Bob Powell, and as always, God bless, Snipper Fi, and I raw. Thank you for watching The Truth is Viral with your host, Bobby Powell. Make sure to follow the apocalypse on Twitter at The Truth is Viral. Like The Truth is Viral on Facebook, and if you can, please remember to donate to the cause via PayPal at www.bobpowell.blogspot.com.